Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Access and today we will discuss about pre-monsoon showers. In our previous videos, we have already discussed that rainfall in Indian subcontinent occurs through these mechanisms, out of which we have already discussed western disturbance, monsoon rainfall and retreating monsoon in our previous videos and the link of which should be available in the descriptions. In this video, we will discuss pre-monsoon rainfalls. So what are pre-monsoon rainfalls? Pre-monsoon rainfalls are convectional rainfalls that occur due to excessive heat received from the sun. In the following slides, we will see what this means in detail. Now, pre-monsoon showers occur in the month from March to May. And we know that monsoon season starts from June. So because this rainfall occurs in the months just before monsoon, that is why we call them pre-monsoon showers. And these pre-monsoon showers are convectional rainfalls. So what is convection? To understand this, let's see this animation where we can see that there is a utensil, there is a water over here and it is heated from fire from below. We can see that the lower portion of this water is heated first. The water molecules which are heated over here, they rise up because heated water molecules are lighter than the colder water molecules. Therefore, they will rise up. Now when they reach over here, the temperature of the water molecules in the surrounding or in the, in the upper portion of this utensil is less. So the heat from these molecules which are heated and they have risen from the bottom, they will be distributed to the water molecules in the upper part of the utensil. Because of this, these water molecules will lose their heat and they will become cool and they will again descend back and this process continues. And because of this process, all these fluids in this utensil will be heated eventually. So this mechanism of heating is called convection and this particular cell is called convectional cell. In order to understand why pre-monsoon shower occurs from March to May, we need to understand the atmospheric conditions over our Indian subcontinent from March to May. So here we can see that during the summer season of Northern Hemisphere, sun is almost overhead of our Indian subcontinent. The sun rays, they are almost vertical and they heat the Indian subcontinent. We see this region is the region where the sunlight is direct in the month of June. So even in the month of March to May, the sunlight is almost vertical and therefore these regions that is our Indian subcontinent, they receive a lot of sunlight. Here we can see the movement of ITCG. In the month of November, the ITCG is located in the southern hemisphere. But as the months pass, we see that the sun will start to move in the northern direction and it will be located over our Indian subcontinent in May season and the ITCG also moves over India. So basically what we can see over here is that sun is directly heating our Indian subcontinent. It is overhead of our southern peninsula. From this animation, we can see that in the month of May, the monsoon winds have not completely reached our Indian subcontinent. Therefore, a northeasterly wind is blowing over our Indian subcontinent. And we know that northeasterly winds, they come from the landlocked regions. Therefore, they do not carry any moisture. So these months, that is from March to May, that is pre-monsoon months, the atmosphere is very clear over our Indian subcontinent. Therefore, the sunlight can directly reach the Indian subcontinent and heat it. Here you can see that we have almost cloudless skies over our Indian subcontinent. Now in this chart, we can see the amount of rainfall in each month for four important cities as well as the temperature graphs in each of these cities. We have picked these cities from four different sides of our India. Now if we take the case of Mumbai, we can see that this is the monsoon season. But if we look at the temperature, the temperature is maximum just before the beginning of monsoon season, that is the pre-monsoon season. So we can see that the temperature is highest in Mumbai during the pre-monsoon season. Similarly, here we can see for Delhi, the temperature is highest in the pre-monsoon season, which is the month of March to May. Same thing is repeated in Kolkata. We can see that temperature is higher over these regions. In the monsoon, it starts to decrease. And similar situation exists in Mangaluru, where the maximum amount of temperature is observed during the pre-monsoon season, that is from March to May. So based on this, we can see that there is very dry climate in our Indian subcontinent and there are clear skies and the temperatures in almost whole of India is very high. In fact, the hottest temperature we can see now in our Indian subcontinent occurs from March to May. 
To summarize the atmospheric condition of our Indian subcontinent from March to May, we can say that northeasterly winds are blowing. And because these winds come from a land rock regions, they do not have any moisture and therefore the climate is cloudless. There are clear skies so we can receive a lot of sunlight during the months of March to May. Moreover, the sun is vertical, almost vertical over our Indian subcontinent and therefore maximum temperatures in each regions can be seen during the months of March to May. Now let's try to understand how this excessive sunlight and excessive heating from the sun leads to convectional rainfall. Right from the morning, sun rays reach our earth and they start heating the land. As the day progresses, sun will go higher up in the sky and the sun rays will become more vertical, more concentrated and therefore they will heat the land even more. Now the air which is lying just above this land will also get heated because of the heat released by this land. Now we have already seen in the convection process that the water which was heated from below those molecules started to rise up because water in the upper part of the utensil were cooler and warm water molecules are lighter therefore it started to rise. Similarly here the air molecules or the layer of air which is heated which is in contact with this land it will be heated and heated air is lighter compared to the cooler air over here therefore these air will start to rise up this is called updraft air. Now if there is any moisture in this air it will be taken up in the higher atmosphere this moisture will cool down and we will see formation of clouds and rain by the time of evening. Therefore in convectional rainfall we generally see that rainfall occurs during the evening time. So here we can see that excessive sunlight leads to heating of the land in a region and the air in contact with that land will get heated too and it will start to rise up, it will carry the moisture and cause rain. And this is the process by which the pre-monsoon shower occurs. Now in this map shared by our meteorological department, we can see that where this pre-monsoon rainfalls occur. Maximum amount of pre-monsoon rainfall occurs in these regions, the regions having this color. After that, we can see that they are mainly coastal regions where we see these pre-monsoon showers. Here also, because of a lot of vegetation, we see that there is a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So the air is when rising up, it will carry this moisture and it will cause rainfall in this region. Similarly here, in the month of March to May, there is a lot of snow melting occurring here. The ice is melting here, which is giving the moisture in the atmosphere. And because of this strong sunlight coming in the month of March to May, the air is rising up, it is carrying the moisture from the molten snow and ice, it gives rainfall in this region. So this region also receives sufficient amount of pre-monsoon showers. Now in certain regions, there are specific names for these pre-monsoon showers. So in West Bengal, we call them Kalbaisakhi. In Karnataka, we call it Mango showers because it helps in ripening of mango. And then it is called blossom showers in Kerala because it helps in coffee growth. So we can see that these are the different names used for pre-monsoon showers which occurs between March to May. So let's see some important characteristics of these pre-monsoon showers. The first is the clouds are more of vertical in nature. So we see that because of the heating of the land, the air in contact with the land rises vertically up and therefore the clouds which are formed are also vertical in nature. Precipitation is mainly convective, that is occurs because of the convection process. So we've already seen the process by which this pre-monsoon rainfall occurs. It is because of the air vertically rising up, carrying the moisture and then that moisture condensing to form clouds and giving rainfall. Daytime heating triggers the convection process. So we have already seen that during the daytime the sun heats the land which triggers this process. And pre-monsoon rainfalls are local rains occurring in limited area. Remember this pre-monsoon showers do not affect a very large regions but they occur in smaller regions. Now let's try to understand the difference between monsoon and pre-monsoon rainfalls. The monsoon rainfalls are spread over a very large region. So the monsoon rainfalls they affect a very large region. They can in fact affect the whole state or in fact the whole country. While the pre-monsoon rainfalls are confined to only a very small areas which means they can affect smaller regions like a small city, a district but they do not affect a whole state or a whole country. The monsoon rainfalls are mainly orographic in nature. 
which means that if air is flowing and it is blocked by a mountain, then this air will try to flow over this mountain. And because of which there will be adiabatic cooling of this rising air and we will get rainfall. So we can see here that there are eastern Himalayas over here, there's Himalaya over here and these are the monsoon winds. These monsoon winds they try to flow over these mountains and we get orographic rainfall. And here we can see that there is convectional rainfall. The land is heated by the sunlight and the air in contact with the land gets heated. It rises up and gives rainfall. So this is convective rainfall. Moreover, there is difference of the time during which the monsoon rainfall occurs and pre-monsoon rainfall occurs. Monsoon rainfall occurs in the month of June to September while pre-monsoon rainfall occurs from March to May and we can see in this chart. Here we can clearly see that for the Kolkata city there is pre-monsoon rainfall from March to May and there is monsoon rainfall from June to September. This is the summary of the differences between the monsoon and pre-monsoon rainfalls. You can note it down if you like. Thanks for watching this video and if you have liked this video then do not forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Do follow us on our social media handles. The link for which should be available in the description. Thank you.